construction. You enumerate the, you enumerate the uh, field of the set of ordered pairs, and you start throwing in points according to whether you're staying in, whether you, according to whether the square, the, the Cartesian product of its, with itself of the stuff you've thrown in is contained in the, uh, in the original set of ordered pairs. And you throw it in if you can, if you can't keep it out, and then this way you get a maximal. Now this is not deterministic because you could have, it's, it's a deterministic relative to the enumeration of the field of the relation, but the field of the relation can be enumerated in any way you want, okay? So that's, um, all right. Now we're moving towards the following statement. Every invariant set of ordered pairs contains an invariant maximal square where the two notions of invariant might be different. This is what we're moving towards. We're going to inject invariance conditions into this simple-minded statement that is well-known follows from Zorn's lemma, and the Calvo case has a beautiful greedy construction. We're going to simply throw invariance conditions in. Okay. Let's see what happens. Now we need some structure to have an invariance condition. So let Q be the set of all rationals, and let Z plus be the set of all positive integers. So I, I, this, the situation, I'm, I'm interested in the rationals and, and the integers sitting in there, uh, positive integers sitting in there. Every invariant subset of Q to the 2K contains an invariant prime maximal square, is what we're headed. Now because I'm in the space Q to the K, and that's a binary relation on Q to the, Q to the K, because I'm in the space 2 to the 2K, uh, I, I can define some a lot of invariance conditions that are very natural. So let's define order equivalence. Two vectors are said to be order equivalent if they're in the same order. And this has a, a well-known definition. So three, five, two, and four, seven, six are in the same order. Okay. Uh, the, the other uh, notion I want is a lifting function. So given a vector of rationals, I can lift it as follows. I can add one to all of the coordinates that are bigger than all of the coordinates that are not positive integers. So just as an example, one three has three five. It doesn't have to be in order, but the, the example is similar. One, one three has three five goes to one three has four six. Because uh, one doesn't go up because it's not bigger than all the things that are not positive, you know, because two three has is not a positive. Okay, it's a very simple lifting operation. And I say that a set is order invariant if and only if for any two order equivalent vectors, one is in the set if, if and only if the other is. If and only would follow from if then in this case. I call a set completely z plus up invariant if and only if for every x, in the, for every vector x in, the, uh, in q to the k, x is in s if and only if its lifting is in s. So this is uh, an example of complete invariance. Uh, complete invariance is a standard piece of terminology. Okay. And we have proved the following. Every order invariant subset of Q to the 2K contains a completely Z plus up invariant maximal square. Every order invariant subset of Q to the 2K contains, and Q to the 2K is viewed as ordered pairs for Q to the K. Every <coughs> order invariant subset of Q to the 2K contains a completely Z plus up invariant maximal square. And I prove this only using much, 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 much more than ZFC. I don't have a proof in ZFC, and I don't know, and I don't know that you can do it in ZFC. However, if you work instead with the, um, with the rationals in the interval 0, 16 inclusive to the 32, so 16 couples from the interval from 0 to 16 closed, uh, where we restrict, uh, 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 where z plus up obviously applies only to uh, right, right open 16, because otherwise we'd go to 17, which is outside the space. Uh, if you do that, then we have every order invariant subset of Q, 0, 16, 32 contains a completely z plus up invariant maximal square. And this I prove the same way as I proved the other one, but this time I know that ZFC is not sufficient. I know that ZFC is not sufficient. Submitted for publication. Okay. Referee report not, not obtained yet. All right. Now, um, I'm repeating the statement. Uh, this statement is very concrete in the following senses. First of all, it is an easy exercise to construct a finite set of sentences in first-order predicates of equality such that the statement is outright equivalent to the satisfiability of those sentences. 
So by Gödel's completeness theorem, we know by general theory, Gödel's completeness theorem, that this statement is equivalent to the formal consistency of a finite set of sentences and predicate calculus, which means that it's what's called pi zero one, the same logical complexity as statements like Fermat's theorem. Go back. Okay, secondly, there's a non-deterministic algorithm straightforwardly associated with the statement, such that the statement holds if and only if this algorithm can be run for infinitely many steps without reaching an obstruction. It can also be shown that the statement holds if and only if this algorithm can be run, this obvious algorithm, by the way, can be run for any given finite number of steps without, re without reaching an obstruction. So saying that you can, for every finite number of steps, you can, you can make this construction without running into obstruction is equivalent to this statement. So that's also clearly very concrete, even though the actual statement is going to involve infinite things. And there are some further examples of statements, which I don't have time to talk to, which are neither provable nor refutable in ZFC, which are a little more involved, and they, they, only <coughs> talk, they, they live entirely in initial segments of the natural numbers so that one does not have to talk about an associated algorithm. One is talking about them directly, and these are explicitly finite. Probably have, what, no, no minutes or one? No, you have uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> I can tell you everything. No, I can't. All right. Uh, so what's being used beyond ZFC? Just beyond ZFC, by the way, is a strongly inaccessible cardinal to give you a flavor for this. And this is what's been used by Grothendieck in his most elaborate form of topoid. Um, kappa is a strong limit cardinal if and only if, uh, for all smaller cardinals, two to the smaller cardinal is less than that cardinal. Kappa is a strongly accessible cardinal if it's a strong limit cardinal, and not the supremum of a set of cardinals that are smaller, of less cardinality, and is uncountable. These are classical definitions of the strongly accessible cardinals, uh, due to Cantor. And I use what I use for this stuff necessarily, demonstrably necessarily, are much, much, much bigger than that. Uh, the ones used, by the way, mathematicians, the vast bulk of mathematicians won't even see um, Aleph 1, for, really, except in school. So Aleph 1 is the first card, uncountable card. All right, the ones used and needed are a lot bigger, and uh, they involve uh, uh, colorings, uh, uh, partitions. So, um, uh, uh, you, if you, for those of you who know the subject a little bit, I can finish this probably in 30 seconds. Um, if you uh, color, if you, if you partition the unordered k tuples from the cardinal, this is what I can need a cardinal with the following property. You, you partition the unordered k tuples into two pieces. Then there is a stationary set, uh, a stationary subset of the cardinal, uh, all of whose k tuples lie in the same piece. And stationary means uh, meets every closed unbounded subset. So stationary is a kind of a large set. So these are, this is a kind of a standard kind of large cardinal principle that goes far, far, far beyond those, those uh, the, the Cantor inaccessible cardinal used by Grothendieck. So with that, I'll, I'll close. And, I, and, I, and, and, and in, with reference to the economics talks, I'm going to say, Pat, you've now become much too big to fail. <laughs>